In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage Heathkit equipment, the ET3200 Digital Design Experimenter. While they had offered some instructional materials as early as the 1950s, in the 1970s, Heathkit got more seriously into the educational market, offering a series of courses on electronics. Part of the offering was a series of hardware experimenters or trainers, which provided a platform for performing the labs in the courses. They typically included power supplies, input signals, and a solderless breadboard. Different trainers were targeted at analog electronics, digital circuits, and microprocessors. When Heathkit got out of the kit business in the early 90s, they focused almost entirely on education until going out of business in 2012. Going through old Heathkit catalogs, I was able to identify at least nine unique models of trainers. They included the ET100, ET6800, and ET3400 microprocessor trainers, the ET1000 analog digital circuit design trainer, the ET3100 electronic design experimenter, the ET3200 digital design experimenter, the ET3300 laboratory breadboard, the ET3600 analog trainer, and the ET3700 digital trainer. They all had model numbers using the ET prefix and were offered as kits that had to be assembled. Most were also offered as a corresponding ETW model that was factory assembled and sold at a higher cost. As far as I can determine from looking at old catalogs, the original ET3200, this unit, was offered from 1976 through 1980 and had a blue case like this one. The ET3200A was a minor update around 1981, sold until 1983. The changes may have been made to comply with the Canadian CSA electrical safety standards, such as switching to a three-wire grounded line cord. The ET3200B model, introduced in 1984, had identical features but was restyled in a white or beige colored case. It was sold until the early 1990s when it was replaced by the similar ET3700. Typical prices in U.S. Heathkit catalogs range from $69.95 in 1976 to $179.95 in 1984. Prices I found for the factory assembled ETW3200 version range from $169.95 to $179.95. This was quite expensive for a hobbyist. Many were sold to colleges, universities, and companies for employee education, often in conjunction with the electronics courses that Heathkit offered. The ET3200 offers the following features. Fixed power supplies for plus 12, minus 12, and plus 5 volts DC. Four logic indicators using LEDs to indicate low or high digital logic levels. A square wave clock signal selectable between 1 hertz 1 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz with normal and inverted outputs. A square wave clock signal based on the AC line frequency, 60 hertz in North America and 50 hertz in Europe. Two bounceless logic toggle switches with normal and inverted outputs. Four data switches that can provide low or high logic levels. These are not debounced. All signals are at TTL levels, nominally 0 volts for low and 5 volts for high. It's compatible with several families of digital logic chips, as described in the manual. And a solderless breadboard with 480 holes. The other devices are also provided with four solderless connections each. It's AC line operated and can be wired for 120 or 240 volts AC. Construction is on one printed circuit board where the back of the PCB is used as the front panel. It's housed in a plastic case. Looking inside, circuitry is on one large single-sided printed circuit board. The power transformer, fuse, and all line voltage circuitry is contained in a separate insulated compartment for safety reasons. Some larger parts like the switches and caps are mounted on this side of the circuit board. The other side of the circuit board contains some circuitry as well as acting as the front panel. The circuitry is all solid state. It's pretty safe being isolated, grounded, fused, and with most line voltage in a separate compartment. 
The power supply uses discrete transistors to implement regulation, voltage adjustment, and current limiting. The unit was mostly aimed at digital electronics, although the plus 12 and minus 12 volt power supplies are more commonly used with analog electronics. The protoboard is quite small. I'm surprised they didn't spring for a larger one. You could, of course, use an external breadboard for larger circuits and just use the unit's electronics. After construction of the kit, the unit itself could be used to test it, using the logic indicators to verify the switches and clock signals. Here I've also jumpered the 1 Hz clock signal to an LED indicator and another to a logic switch and a data switch. For a large example of breadboarding a circuit, I've built the circuit listed in the manual which implements a D-type flip-flop using a 7400 quad 2 input NAND gate. The D input goes to a data switch to select the input data level and the T input to a logic switch to toggle the clock input. We can monitor the two outputs using the LED indicators and we can apply different inputs and confirm that we get the expected outputs. In this case, a D-type flip-flop sets the Q output to the value of the input when the T or clock input goes high. The Q bar output has the complement of the Q output. When the clock input is low, the output value remains stored. I bought this unit on eBay in March of 2024 from a local seller here in Ottawa, Canada. It was complete but without a manual. You can find copies of the schematic and full manual online. It was quite clean and didn't appear to have been heavily used. Looking inside, the quality of the soldering was not great but was adequate. I noticed some issues when testing it. A power supply ground connector was loose and had a bad solder joint. I just resoldered it. Indicator LED L3 was not working. The line cord was a little aged, but okay. I did some minor cleaning of the unit and cleaned the switches with contact cleaner. The clocks were working, the three power supplies were good, and the switches worked correctly. The 100 kilohertz output was about 93 kilohertz, not at a 50% duty cycle, which is expected. The 1 kilohertz output was 1.01 kilohertz, and the 1 hertz output was 0.98 hertz. The line source was a 60 hertz square wave. I traced the circuitry for the bad indicator and it turned out to be a bad solder joint. Resoldering it fixed the issue. The electrolytic capacitors tested good. There's one voltage adjustment to make to the unit. A trim pot is adjusted so that the 12 volt output is at 12 volts. I did this. It uses some discrete transistors. While a common type, MPSA20, they're marked with the Heathkit part numbers. This is an indication that Heathkit bought parts in such high quantities that they could ask manufacturers to do custom labeling. The ET3200 was a useful piece of equipment for learning or prototyping electronic circuits, supplementing the training courses that Heathkit offered. It's still useful today for breadboarding small digital circuits. I also own an ET3100A, which is similar but more geared toward analog circuits. If you're interested in Heathkit equipment like this one, you may want to check out my new book, Classic Heathkit Computers, Calculators, and Robots. It aims to be the definitive guide to Heathkit computers, from the analog computers of the 1950s to the IBM PC compatibles of the 1990s. It includes coverage of calculators, the hero line of robots, microprocessor trainers and peripherals, as well as software and tips on restoration and repair. It sells for about US $25 and is available from lulu.com and other retailers like Amazon.